This is YBR with BeamNG Drive, and today we are going to be taking a look at a mod called Spring. We have two color options here, we have a red and we have a green. That to me makes this feel like a Christmas mod, even the shade of the colors makes me think of Christmas. So anyways, this is the Spring, we got a block on each side of this thing, so what can we do with it? Well, we could go ahead and drop a pickup truck on it and see what happens there. So we'll bring the pickup truck up a few feet and drop it from there. We'll get the slow-mo on and ready to go so you can watch the Spring compress under the weight of the truck. And at this point in time, the spring is not strong enough to rebound because the truck is so heavy. The thing is, eventually, it will be. So right now, let's just get this truck off of it so you can see the spring rebound from that. Truck is off. Spring is back and lively as ever. Now, here's the coolest thing about this mod. I gotta show this off right now because I don't think I've ever seen another mod that does this. You can change the dimensions of the prop using the tuning menu. This is something really unique. So you can make this thing absolutely massive from the tiny thing it is now before you couldn't even fit a vehicle on this thing now we could open up a car dealership on it and not only does that make the spring bigger it also makes it stronger so now if we put a pickup truck on this thing you will see the spring is actually able to compress and then rebound from the weight of the vehicle so then it goes down and then back up and eventually it'll level out a little bit lower than it started but we can keep piling things on until eventually the spring becomes fully compressed and the two pieces are touching each other. Although right now, I don't think that's going to happen because it looks like it's stuck inside of some of those other pieces that are on the map. So I'm going to move it over here to the more central area of the map. And then we need to put some heavy things on it. And there are very few vehicles heavier than a bus. And we'll be doing the exact same thing, but this time we're going to be using a bus. So we go above the spring, we freeze physics, we teleport it into place, and then we get a good camera angle to watch everything go down. So that seems like a decent enough camera angle. Now compress! <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what? Where did it go? I don't... Did it go under the map? Okay, well, first off, um, the bus just got obliterated to bits. Like, I have never seen the bus get that destroyed. That is something else. Now, where in the world is the spring, actually? It took off into space. I am Elon Musk. Check me out as I shoot springs into space. Uh, I think I know what happened there. I, I didn't expect that to happen, but I think I have an idea of what's going on. Oh, whoa, it's still going crazy. Okay, let's uh, get the bus out of the way. We're going to put it back over here where I started it, wherever that is. It's somewhere over here, isn't it? There we go. And then also the spring, we're going to reset it and we're going to mess around with it a little bit. So I think what happened is, is when I made it bigger, I didn't change any of the spring values over here. So the spring just compressed too much and then like inverted and the game didn't know what to do in the spring inverted. So it just went boom. And well, we can't be doing that. So what we're going to do is just going to increase the damping value and the spring value some. I have no idea how much we actually need to increase it. Now it looks like it's a solid object. I don't want to increase that much. So we'll maybe reduce them both down a little bit. See what that does. Still looks like a solid object. So we'll reduce them some more. And how does that look? Well, you know, what? let's just put a bus on it and see what happens this time. So bus on it. Freeze physics, and let's see what it does. Compress. Oh, that's still. That thing really does take off, though. Like, it was just gone and out of space. It looked like Team Rocket right there. Just bing, gone. It's gone. And there is the bus again annihilated there. All right, so we will keep the spring value and the damping value increased a lot then. I didn't think it would be necessary, but no, 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 it is. All right, now try again with the bus. We put it right here. Freeze physics. And once again, how about a nice camera angle here that's actually prepared to see it lift in the space if it does? No, there we go. Okay, that is a good setting for the spring where it actually does what a spring is supposed to do. Although I will say it was funny watching it do things it wasn't supposed to do. I wonder, if we put a regular car on this thing, will it just take off in the space with it? Obviously, it'll come back down because it obeys physics unlike the spring, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to Swap out the bus for a car, and then we'll make the spring really, really janky. But this time, it's going to be on purpose. So we're going to go over to the tuning menu once more. We're going to make the spring value zero, and then we'll make the damping value. We want it to be low, like 500. I think that'll work good. And Okay, well, it didn't even have time to compress. It literally just looked like it exploded and destroyed the car. And yeah, that it did destroy the car. Oh my goodness. That's like leap of death kind of destruction right there. And the spring is just, is it still like expanding? No, that's as far as it's going to expand. See, I don't know exactly what happened there, but it was chaos. All right, so we can reset the spring and you see it just slowly closes on itself. And when it closes, that's when the destruction happens. So the car is like under the spring or inside of it now. 
And it's not going to close all the way, it looks like, though. That means we can grab the car. I want to drop it from a height. For max fun, we're going to drop it from this high. We'll reset the spring. And then we're going to go slow-mo so we can actually see maybe a little bit of what's happening here. We're going to do 16 times slow-mo. So that's quite a bit of slow-mo for something like this, I would think. Compressing. Everything's normal. 100 times slow-mo. Everything looks normal. And then the spring shakes. And the car is just completely destroyed at this point. It didn't even really look like there was an impact. It just got exploded on. And is it going to fly into the air? Because that's what I was hoping it would do. Yes, it is. It is taking off. That is awesome. That is exactly what I hoped would happen. And now I got a car coming from the air on fire. Ooh, what was that? Uh, I guess that's just the spring kind of causing some glitchiness. Yeah, all the glitchiness. You might think, oh, that's the spring's fault. Actually, the spring is fine. The spring is causing it indirectly by obliterating cars. So the cars glitch. Because if you look here, all this stuff that's glitching out is like from the tires of the car that's been exploded. All right, so now let's make this thing again a practical spring. I'm going to increase both of the values to about 5,500. And then we can go ahead and hit apply. And actually, that one's not 5,500, is it? You got to count the zeros here. There's three zeros. So that's actually 56,000. And we could drop another car on this thing. And we'll do it at full speed so we can really see how it goes down. And that looks pretty reasonable. It did some springiness, but it still looked pretty stiff. So we're going to reduce the values a little bit more. We'll bring it to around the 20s range. So 2,100 and 23,000. And then we'll go ahead and drop the car again and see what that does. I want it to compress almost all the way. So it's as soft as a landing as possible. That's too much. So you got to find the limit. If you do it too much, it explodes. If you do it just enough, though, you should have a car that gets minimal damage. Now, this, this is not minimal damage. That is maximum damage there. So I'll bring the spring back, and I'll increase both of them to the 30 range. How about we'll do 35 on each of them and see what that does. So 35, 35, apply. And then once again, we drop a car onto it and... Watch what the spring does. That was really good. It compressed a lot of the way. It still flings the car way back up because it rebounds so hard, but I'm kind of okay with that because it's entertaining to watch. And the important thing is the car is barely damaged for how far it fell from. There is so little damage on this thing. I mean, look at how high it actually is. See, this takes a while to get down there, and that looks like it's going to be a hard hit. The camera freaks out a little bit even and spins all over the place, but there is not that much damage. You know what we should do is a comparison. It's not exactly a perfect comparison because it's going to fall a little bit longer, but I'm going to move the spring out of the way, and then we're just going to drop the car straight onto the ground so you can see how much damage that gets. And this will probably destroy the car in an undrivable state, maybe? Let's see. Can it drive a little bit? Oh, it can still drive just barely, though. Like, this is a struggle compared to the other one where it's like, oh, it got into a minor fender bender comparatively. So... Well, let's try dropping something heavier onto this thing. We don't want it to be bus heavy, but we want it to be heavier than the car we have. So why don't we do the D35 Beast, which weighs about 6,000 pounds. This might be so much that it compresses it completely and it freaks out, or it might still be okay. It kind of depends how high we do it. So we'll do it maybe from this height and see what that looks like. So get nice and close. And let's see, what does it do? Oh, it shatters it. And it blocks out the sun. It is so powerful. And again, though, the thing that's actually glitching out is the truck because... You reset the truck and everything looks fine. Oh, interesting. If the truck even hits the side of the spring, it causes some chaos. All right, so we'll reset the spring. We're going to increase both of the values. We'll bring them up to like almost maxed out in the nine range. So that should make it quite a bit stiffer for this much heavier vehicle. And let's see. There we go. And with that much suspension travel, that thing's going to look flawless, isn't it? Okay, we broke the rear window and that's pretty much it. This heavy duty truck is perfectly fine. Like if I wasn't stuck on top of this thing, I could totally drive off it, but I'm stuck on top of it. So that doesn't work. Uh, how about this? We try something else that sounds wacky. I'm going to go to the tuning menu and I'm going to make it where the strength value is zero. And we're going to see what that does. Although it's rolling all over the place. I don't want that. I want it to be in the same spot. So we're going to say strength value zero. And that actually that's the part that makes it disappear. Okay. How about deformation value of zero? Does that also make it disappear? No, it does not. It looks like it's slowly closing down. So let's see what that does. And then just... Oh, look at that! Okay, look! If you want to keep driving the vehicle, that's what you do. 
It slowly drops it on the ground with minimal damage and you're good to go off for a drive. Uh, unfortunately, it's a one-time use pad though. It's compressed itself into nothingness, kind of under the ground a little bit, I guess. Yeah, it's just compressed itself under the ground. That was awesome. I want to see that again from the vehicle's perspective. And we'll use a little bit of slow motion as well to really see what's going on here. So here is the impact. The suspension is compressing a good amount, but I don't think it's actually bottoming out super hard. It did bottom out a little bit at the end, but it was actually hitting the spring. It really softened it up. And looking at this vehicle here, it is in excellent condition. I don't see any problems with it at all. And for comparison, this is what it would look like without the spring. It's destroyed. I don't even know if it's going to be able to drive after something like that. Let's see. Oh, well, surprisingly, yes, it can still drive. It can drive enough for me to get it up to speed and crash into something else. For all these blocks over here, those are great for crashing into. We're going to be going almost 100 miles per hour. And that kills the vehicle. It is just mangled now. I am curious though, if we have this setup on the spring, does it work with a bus? I think it might just glitch out again like last time, or maybe it'll slow it down. I really don't know, but we're going to try it on out. So you bring the bus way into the air, we'll reset the spring, and then we wait for impact. Uh, that's, that's going to miss. Let me realign this spring into the right position, so I'll put it right about here, and that looks better. And bus going down, going down, down, down. Uh, no, that is not good. I was hoping that it would actually work, and then all of a sudden it just exploded still. So not exactly sure what causes it to explode sometimes, but you actually could see the explosion that time, which is pretty interesting. As for the bus, yeah, it's, it's also ruined. So obviously a bus is going to be too heavy for this. So let's try something else. We're going to end up with two of the springs, and we're going to stack them on top of each other, and we're going to drop a car into the stack and see if stacking them makes the amount of damage on the car less. So there should be a pretty good stack. That looks like it's on point. Although I'm noticing the lower spring is getting compressed. So we have to like reset them and then drop it onto it immediately afterwards so that doesn't happen. Already right there, you can see it's starting to compress again. I mean, I could just retune the springs and fix that probably, but it's not that much more difficult to just go and reset the springs every time you drop a car. So the car is falling. We reset both of the springs. They come into contact. They just compress a tiny bit and there is the car. So let's go ahead and get the slow-mo on, get a good camera angle for this thing, and watch what happens to the car. So spring number one, slowing it down. Spring number two, also slowing it down, I think. And to the ground without that much damage, it looks like. Because this car does not have a lot of suspension travel. Small jumps will damage it. And that was a huge jump, and it is able to, well, almost able to drive out of it. It looks like the wheel's just a little bit stuck inside of the springs which is more of a glitch than anything, so it just gets something a little more ground clearance for this. How about the uh, off-road version of the Vanster? That thing has some good ground clearance to it. And if we use this, I'm sure we will drive off of this no problem. So again, way in the air. And we'll make sure both of the springs are ready to go nice and fresh. Vanster is incoming, and I'm going to watch the springs this time to see what they do. And ooh, the Vanster's coming at a weird angle. So looking at the springs there, they don't do anything crazy glitchy or anything like that. They actually look about how you'd expect until the last second where they all merge into a single object and damage to the vans there's a little bit worse than i expected from the initial drop but then i saw the angle that it was coming at and i knew it was going to get some damage uh, overall though it's still drivable this thing works fine so how about we do the same thing we just did but we're going to remove one of the springs so we only have one spring to slow this thing down it should be a lot more damage so you can see that multiple springs does reduce the damage or maybe it doesn't i think it does though just based on watching them so, impact. Oh, yeah, that is definitely worse. Like, we got pieces flying off of the truck. We got the back doors really popped open. That was definitely worse. So, doubling up on the springs is a good strategy to get things to work better. And it's actually dead. It won't drive. So, let's go ahead and move the spring over to a wall. Because I want to try crashing into the spring with it in front of a wall. And see if it works as a good cushion for that. I see no reason why it shouldn't. So... We'll get a full spring up, and then we just got to grab it by a corner and bring the corner up to this wall. So I guess this should be the inside corner, really. So I got to rotate this thing 180 degrees around, or we could just grab this corner, which seems like the much easier solution. So we pop one right there, and then we'll put the other one about next to it. Just got to make sure I don't crush it too badly. I think that will work. Oh, well, it's really 
crooked. Uh, what if we reset that? Does that do anything better? That works a lot better. That looks good. Yeah, it looks like it's going to stay, right? It's not sliding or anything. That's good. So I would go to the van, which is way up in the air. So why don't we just get something else? We'll do a uh, Pessima. And that puts us back on the ground by spawning it up. That's why I did this. We're going to have to wreck another poor innocent van. So we go hit that wall. We'll probably be going nearly 100 miles per hour, I think. So this is going to be a really good high speed crash. And we're going to see... Will the spring reduce the speed? So the actual speed is going to be about 90 miles per hour. It looks like not quite 100 like I was expecting, but still a good speed. And we are still reading in the 80s right here, but it looks like the car is slowing down really fast. Like now it's only reading 40s. It is stopping in such a short distance too. And that is not that badly damaged for the speeds we were going. Again, it looks like a minor fender bender for something that would completely annihilate a car normally. I mean, we already have a slightly destroyed car, so it's going to be a little bit more damaging than normal. But here's like a slightly slower crash, like 70 miles per hour, 80 miles per hour area. And that thing, that thing's not driving at all. Before, that thing was driving perfectly fine. I had no issues whatsoever with the way it was driving. So I think that pretty easily proves that it works great as a crashing cushion. Now one of these back onto the ground again. So I think the easiest way to do that will just be to clone the one I have, actually. I didn't think about that. So I'm going to go ahead and mess around with the settings on this a little bit more. I'm going to make it as stiff as it can go because I want it to rebound as hard as it possibly can. So I think this should be an ideal setup for that. And then we got to go ahead and grab a car and place it right on top of it. We still got the pessimist. So we could just teleport that right in the center, clean it up, make it a fresh one. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the environment menu. We're going to go and decrease the gravity as low as it can go to compress the spring. And then we hit earth gravity to make the spring expand and there we go the car went into the air a pretty decent amount and it comes down and it kind of gets damaged i bet if we did that again it'll actually fall off let's see compress expand and is it gonna fall off yep there it goes i wonder will it still drive at this point let's see yeah the spring even though it's really stiff was enough to reduce the damage where it can drive not good but it at least accelerates the next thing I want to do once again involves the tuning menu. We're going to make a really tall and tiny spring. <laughs> I don't really know what to do with this, but it, it's exactly what I thought it would be. It looks pretty ridiculous. And you see the nodes still line up so we can tip this thing over. And I want to try using it as a chain between two vehicles, basically. So we already have a Pessima right here. So we'll reset that and use that. And then for the next vehicle, we could probably use pretty much anything. So how about we get the track version of the Moonhawk so we have something that has a decent amount of power to pull this Pessima all over the place. We'll have to do a little bit of maneuvering to get this thing positioned. We get in front of it and then we back up a bit and that alignment looks pretty good. And we should be able to attach this thing right to basically the rear bumper and this will be strong enough to hold it because that is actually part of the frame if I remember correctly. Uh, the Pessima is a little bit different. If we attach it to the rear bumper, it wouldn't work. So we tear the rear bumper off. And then we can attach it directly to the vehicle on a much stronger surface. So we'll go ahead and get that thing attached. And we should be able to go. Just pull it along. Or not. Um, huh. It, ju it just can't get the traction that it needs, it looks like. What if we also accelerate the Pessima? Does that do anything? Not enough to make a difference. Like, they move a little bit, but still that's bad. So we need something that's a little bit more towing focused, I guess. So how about we swap out this thing for a gravel roamer and we'll get the off-road one because it has a little bit more power and a little bit more ground clearance, which might be helpful. I'm not sure if the spring is dragging along the ground or if I just can't put the traction down because it's heavier than it looks. But I know the roamer should be able to do whatever it needs to do to get this thing moving. So I'll attach it up and uh, back it up a bit because it won't go. All right, good enough. Go, go, go. It actually worked. Yeah. We are now pulling the Pessima along really, really badly. I'm, I'm sure once we get up to speed, it'll straighten out a bit. But right here, it's really all over the place. And we are up to speed. It is straightened out. And that has worked excellent. I'll zoom out a lot so you can see how the car actually handles being pulled along. And it looks like it's working surprisingly well, to be honest with you. I did not expect it to work this good. I thought it might like stretch out and break or something. But I guess I had it really stiff. So it's able to hold up and work really well. It's just like... A chain to connect two vehicles. Now this is gonna wreck them. It's fun to watch the two cars fly as they're attached though. I think it's kind of like a nunchuck or something as it flies through the air. Are we gonna land on our wheels? Come on, rolling. 
No, yes. Yes, we will. But I'm not going to be doing any more driving. Instead, I want to make another one of these springs with stupid dimensions. So we made a really tall and thin one. Now we're going to make a really short and fat one and see if that one's at all interesting to take a look at. So I bring this thing all the way down to 0 0.1. Hit apply. And what do we get? Nothing. I, I don't even see it unless it kind of fell into the ground. Okay, there it is. That, I, I don't even know what to do with that, honestly. It just looks like a platform at this point. But there you go. If you were to do that, that's what it looks like, I guess. Anyways, anyways, I want to try to drop this thing a leap of death and see what happens. So let's move over to there. And with something like the spring, there is no way to drive it down a leap of death. So what we got to do is we got to spawn it up and then just teleport it. And I'm going to use the default settings because that seems like the most natural. I was messing around with the settings a lot and it kind of made it look less springy and stuff. It was fun to mess around with. But if you want to watch it roll down leap of death, I think this is going to be the best way to do it. And you can see it's actually expanding, contracting in the air. So it is doing some stuff and ooh, right there, it smashed down so hard that it really expanded afterwards. And then you got the spinning, keeping it expanded. This is actually surprisingly interesting. I didn't expect it to be this interesting. I thought it would just break or just tumble really boringly, but now it's super expanding. The camera doesn't even know exactly what to do with it. But that is interesting. Like, let's see here. How much is this thing actually expanding right quick? So. Full slow-mo here. It is expanding significantly more than its normal distance. That is a good bit more. And then it contracts back. That's what it looks like in third person. Is it actually not uh, contracting anywhere? There we go. Now it's kind of bouncing around again. It's going to go into the water, but not the water you would have expected. What happens when it goes in the water? It don't care. It just don't care. It goes in and out of the water, barely phased. And then it's like a heartbeat just kind of thumping in the water. Uh, we can make it go all the way down Leap of Death, though. We're almost there. Anyways, let's do another little restart from here and should be able to roll its way down. We'll see what happens. I mean, this thing really goes down in unexpected ways, so I can't exactly predict what it's going to do. I can only guess that hopefully it'll go into the water, but it looks like it's going to actually go maybe a little up. Oh, nope, it just it decided to turn into the water. Thank you very much, Springy. Doing exactly what I wanted to see you do. And oh, there we go. That thing, like I got punched in the face right there, it felt like. And once again, into the water. And we are done with the spring, I think. Nothing more I can think of doing. You can't take this thing down brutal slope because it ain't got no wheels. So until next time, this is YBR. If you don't like this video, I'll know. So I'll see ya.